Playing a board game solitaire is now more feasible than ever before. Many games come with a solo variant or scenario to allow people to play a game on their own. But it's not without its challenges, and in this video, I'm going to outline the top 10 biggest challenges for solo gamers here on Legendary Tactics. These days, even with online options, it sometimes feels like it's hard to get opponents for some games. And sometimes, you're just looking to have a quiet time for yourself, kind of like doing a puzzle or completing a crossword. And a solo game offers a unique challenge with more theme and varied interest. But there are some challenges to playing games solitaire, and I'm going to outline 10 that I've identified for you to be aware of. I will try and offer solutions based on my own experience that will hopefully be of help to you. Number one, space. I think anyone with a gaming habit understands this one, even if you don't play solo games. There are some great games out there with amazing components, including a giant full color map board, player aids, tiles, supplementary boards, etc. You don't have to be playing the campaign for North Africa with its 10 foot long board. Sometimes just finding a table big enough to comfortably accommodate your new board game is problematic. But a lot of times, because of scheduling constraints, most people play a game on game night through to its conclusion, and whoever owns the game takes it home with them. Solo games, though, may move at a slower pace. Sometimes you want to savor a game situation or chew on a strategic decision for a while before making your move, and many times you are fitting in game time around a busy schedule. This means that the game may need to remain set up for a duration of a few days or even weeks as you work your way through it, and this means that you need dedicated available space. And this space can shrink radically when you factor in partners, pets, and kids. Keeping the game safely ensconced behind a closed and potentially locked door in a room that represents 30% of your living space just might not be practical. So, often the option with the lowest risk means that solo games need to be completed and packed away in one sitting, thereby limiting the depth and complexity of the games that you can play. So how do you solve this? Well, one of the best options might be to play the game on your computer. While it loses its tactile pleasure, almost any game can be played on Tabletop Simulator, Tabletopia, or Vassal. Some games will even have dedicated apps, many of which we feature here on Legendary Tactics. It's not ideal, but it does not take up any space and you can enjoy your game at your leisure. Other than that, there are a couple of creative solutions. It may not be practical to cover your game with some sort of material that allows you to utilize the space when you're not playing, but that might be a possibility if you have a table with raised edges, for example. Also, if there's not a lot of components, you can either write down or take a picture of the game state so you can recreate it later. This can actually work quite well in the right circumstances. Number two, time. The second challenge that the solo gamer faces is time. Let's assume that you have solved the space issue. Your game is set up and you're working your way through it, sitting down for a few minutes before work, a few minutes after work, or a few minutes before bedtime. If you're playing a particularly involved solo game, one of the challenges I've found is keeping your attention over a long period. For example, a game that would normally take three hours to play would mean you would have to sit down and play between nine and 12 separate times to finish it if you had 15 to 20 minutes available each time. But of course, it will take longer than that. You need to get into the right headspace. You need to re-familiarize yourself with the situation. You may need to check some rules. And it means that the game will take much longer than the time requirement printed on the box. Because of that, attention and focus can wander. Sometimes it can take an inordinate amount of time to complete a game. And so you lose the thread of the story. I've had times when I wish one game would just finish so I could switch to another one that has taken my fancy at the moment. And I don't like that. The worst is when you feel you just don't have the interest to complete a game anymore and you have to pack it up as incomplete after all that time and energy has been invested. Taking your time with a solo game doesn't have to be a bad thing. If you have the time to spare, it can be a nice relaxing thing to puzzle through. But if you're like most people, you're pressed for time among various commitments. So what can you do? I would recommend that you commit to a certain amount of time every day, or perhaps to play one turn per day. This way, you don't forget rules, the story the game is telling feels like it's making constant progress, and you won't have problems with focus. 
only start a game that you know you can finish in a reasonable amount of time. Don't start something big just before you have a big project to complete at work or you know you will have lots of family commitments. When time is needed, timing is essential. Number three, rules. One of the challenges with any game that doesn't have an app or a live opponent to help enforce the rules is that you have to keep track of the rules yourself. With some games, that task is easier than others. So what happens when you have made a mistake with one or some of the rules? Well, the first thing you can do is to try and walk things back. If the mistake just happened and it's not hard to remember where everything was, you can reset the board state and then play through the turn correctly. But what if you have gone too far? I could recommend that one of the best things to do is to fall back on the narrative of the game. Focus on the story that the game is trying to tell you and don't worry about a mistake or two with the rules. It might even make for a more compelling and interesting game that way. If you're more of a purist like myself and a mistake was made that you can't walk back, then keep the mistake in place and keep playing that way going forward. Treat it as a potentially new variant and see if it has viability or if it skews the game in a bad way. Number four, difficulty level. The difficulty level of a game is quite different from the complexity of the rules. Some games have a rule book that's only a couple of pages long, but the game is so involved and intricate that it is hard to get through. I love the coin series by GMT Games, but they are not necessarily an easy solo experience. Take Fire in the Lake, for example. The basic game rules are about 12 pages long and are very similar to other games in the series, meaning that if you are familiar with previous games, you don't have to absorb that many new rules. However, the scope of the game is just huge, and the bots, while I'm happy to have them, are very intricate, and many times I feel like I'm taking 5 minutes for my turn and then 55 minutes to run the flowchart-driven enemy. To overcome this challenge, I like to choose games with bots like the Automa in Viticulture by Stonemaier Games. Simple, easy to run, yet challenging. That's the kind of game you might want to go for. In the coin series, I find the flowcharts for Indian Abyss and Cuba Libre are much easier to run than many other games in the series. Gandhi has a deck of cards that takes on the role of the AI enemy, greatly simplifying things as well. So pick a game whose AI opponent matches the headspace and capacity that you have at that time. Number 5. Rules Adaptations for Solo Play Many games are designed for a group of players, or at least one opponent. The explosion of solo gaming in recent years has caused many games to add a solo variant of some sort, sometimes with mixed success. Sometimes the rules to implement an automated opponent for a game intended to be played by another human being or three can be quite burdensome and awkward. Play balance can also be an issue, as playing against a solo opponent can sometimes be either too easy or next to impossible to win. So what can you do about this? I would encourage you to approach this with a spirit of experimentation. Check on websites like BoardGameGeek.com where you may find that other people have run into the same issues that you have, and they may have proposed variants that are worth trying. And try out your own modifications. You never know if you might stumble on a great way to handle a particular game, something that even the designer didn't think of. Another option is playing each side to the best of your ability. The focus here will be on the narrative of the game rather than the challenge of winning against an AI. This can have its own rewards. Number 6. Playing the opponents well. Which dovetails nicely into my next solo gaming challenge, playing the opponents well. When you're playing solo, sometimes the game calls for your automated opponent to either make a terrible decision or even a nonsensical one. That's sometimes just part of the game and is something of a necessary evil. So what can you do about this potential issue? You can always step in to override a bad decision made by the game mechanics to make sure that you give yourself a proper challenge. Or you might let it go and see how things play out. Sometimes a move that seems crazy in the moment can actually turn out to be decisive or at least difficult for you to overcome later on. You never know. Number 7. Picking a good genre. The next challenge that I would consider is picking a good genre. What do I mean by that? Basically, this may be something that you're doing already. Pick something that you're actively interested in. 
To play solo, you need to be interested in the topic, the history, the gameplay, or anything else that will sustain you through the potentially multiple hours and playthroughs that a solo game can provide. It doesn't matter how good the reviews are, it needs to be something that you are willing to devote your time and energy to. Number 8. Narrative My eighth challenge for solo board gamers ties into number 7. Most times, people play solo board games for the narrative, the story that the game tells. The challenge the game provides only adds drama to the story. While you can't always predict which game is going to tell a great story or even whether a particular game is going to tell a great story that particular time, I recommend you sit back from time to time to reflect. Get away from the rules and the strategies for a few minutes and just appreciate the events that have happened to bring you to the current game state. Bring some imagination to the table and picture how things might have actually played out as if they were a movie. Make it memorable. There's no point in going through the exercise of playing a solo game if you can't remember a thing that happened after you're done. Hopefully you're getting a lot of value out of this video and if you are, please take a moment to like, subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what solo games you love best and what you like best about them or if you know of any other challenges that come with solo gaming that I forgot. Number 9. Difficulty versus Success Many solo games are essentially an interactive puzzle with some luck thrown in to add variety. Sometimes games will include different levels of difficulty and you want to make sure that you are picking the mode that is appropriate for your skill level and mood. Nothing is more frustrating than trying to beat a game that's at a level far higher than your ability, as it feels hopeless and is generally not enjoyable. At the same time, you don't want to have a game that's too easy and that doesn't feel like a challenge. Those games, especially if they take an extended amount of time to play, just feel like a waste of time when you're done. The challenge is what will keep it interesting. I would recommend that, in general, if you're new to the game, start with an easy setting if you're brand new and are still learning the mechanics, but otherwise just work on the normal level. When you can beat that normal level of difficulty over 60 or 70% of the time, that's probably an indication that you're ready to move up. I think the sweet spot of solitaire play is when you only win about 30% of the time. For some reason, failure is more compelling than success. In the game Pandemic, for example, it always feels less satisfying to me to win the game. It always seemed that the drama of losing was a lot more fun, especially with the post-game debrief where everyone tried to pinpoint where they went wrong. And from there, you can keep adding difficulty until you feel like it's at a level where you can enjoy it for the long term. Number 10. Not cheating. Everyone can readily bring to mind that image of the golfer who hits the ball into the woods, looks around to make sure that no one else is watching, and then kicks the ball out into the fairway. To cheat or not to cheat? After all, no one will know. It's a solitaire game. Well, this challenge is really up to personal taste. As a gaming purist, I can't bring myself to cheat, even if I lose a game badly as a result. But there are others that feel differently. Who wants to play a game for two straight hours only to have a bad die roll or two end it prematurely with the death of your character or a sudden death win by the Automa? I would once again return to the narrative. If bending a rule here and there will mean that you will have a more enjoyable experience and that the game will tell a better story, I think that's a better outcome. Maybe that game will just have to have an asterisk next to it in the annals of your gameplay, and you'll just have to be okay with that. This was a rundown of my top 10 challenges that solo players face in board gaming. I hope you found it useful and interesting, and I would love to hear your comments. Please leave your thoughts in the comments section below, and while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps out our channel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you here next time on Legendary Tactics.